But Sadhguru, don't you think population explosion, like the chi China was also facing a similar problem few years ago and they have tackled it so well and with us… Don't say well, they've handled it <laughs> because you should know in China… No, I don't know. They were burying live children. Second child born, live children were just being buried in the hospitals. When that video was taken and it went viral around, around the world, they changed that to giving iodine injections to the brains of healthy children, second child. So you don't have the stomach nor the heart to do anything like that, so don't compare to China. But do we have to control our population? Absolutely. So There's at least there should no be question. tax on the third child? Hmm? <laughs> what is that? At least there should be tax on the third child because they're using roads and river water which you're trying to save <laughs> and, the, and the oxygen from the trees which I am plant, planting with many other people. So at least third, two children should be okay, but third one should I have tax. I don't say that because I'm, I'm the fourth among the siblings <laughs> so I have a big tax sitting on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some incentives have to be done. <laughs> right now when I spoke about this a uh, year ago, a lot of controversy in the south, we've been trying to bring this in the villages. A year… a voluntary year of no conception. All we need to do is… see, because our life expectancy has improved, it's not because an explosion of reproduction has happened. No, that's not true. It is our life expectancy is improving. That means we took our death into our hands but we are not taking the birth into our hands. We have… see, just about fifty years ago, an average time when the first child happened to a w young woman in this country was somewhere around sixteen or seventeen years of age. It's moved to about twenty-four right now, but we need to push this to thirty-five. <laughs> Sadhguru, uh, these days, the, the common discussion which is going on is again about the, the refugees and we being celebrities, we get these questions asked and this is the most conflicting uh, question ever because as, as a nation, any, like you know, being a part of this country and knowing that so many of us don't even have access to food, education, electricity, absorbing more people into our population clearly isn't a good idea, but denying those people is, seems even worse. So what should be, like again, where does spirituality comes here? Like what part does it play? And what happens to inclusiveness when such a thing happens? You're picking on my yoga definition. No! <laughs> no, like I, I clearly know that yes. this is the worst thing to do right now because they are coming in millions and millions and millions where our own are starving. So it's like saying that I let my own child die but I save the neighbor's one. So, I mean, what sort of if negotiation that, is that? If that was the intent, I would bow down to such people. I will let my own child but I'll save your child, I will bow down to such people if they exist. <laughs> but that's not the thing. We are trying to project our inefficiency as compassion, I don't like that. We don't know how to man our borders but we are talking about compassion, that's not the truth. We're just projecting our inefficiency as some kind of a great value, there's no value to that. So talking about influx of people from outside, see when somebody comes to the nation's door, because they are violently persecuted somewhere, we should treat it differently. After all, they are human beings. But for economic well-being, people are daily porous borders, people are going across here and there, we need to do something about it. If we don't do anything about it, we will be stupid because you cannot run a nation without knowing how many people and who is in this country. We, we cannot run a country like that. First of all, we must understand, I am not for nationhood if you ask me. It would be fantastic if we lo live as one world, but we are nowhere near that possibility, okay? We are nowhere near that possibility. Right now the best way to address humanity and the largest segment of humanity that you can address right now is a nation. So nationhood is right now very important and a practical solution for humanity as a whole. In the making of a nation, one of the most basic ingredients is the sovereignty or the physical, geographical peace that we call a nation. In this there may be culture, there may be language, there may be religion, there may be everything else, economics, everything is secondary. First and foremost thing is 
There is a piece of geography which we call as a nation.